Again, solving inequalities is more important than solving equalities, so let's see if we can find the solutions to inequalities involving roots. Remember that the process of solving inequalities begins by ignoring the inequality and solving the corresponding equality for the critical values. But then, like a good human being, we have to go back and address the inequality. And mathematically, the critical values partition the number line into several intervals, and we test points at each interval to see where the inequality is satisfied. And so this approach works with linear and quadratic inequalities, but now we have a new type of critical value. Because the square root of x is undefined if x is less than 0, a radical inequality includes a second inequality in itself. In particular, we have to make sure that the thing that we're taking the square root of is not negative. And the critical values for this inequality are also critical values for the original. For example, let's solve square root 4x minus 7 greater than or equal to 5. So first, we'll turn a blind eye and pretend that this is an equality and solve the equation. So one critical value is x equals 8. Now, we do have an inequality. So like a good math student or a good human being, we have to acknowledge that inequality. And we'll check to see if x equals 8 satisfies this inequality. And the easy way to do that is to remember that x equals 8 satisfies the equation. And our inequality allows for equality. So x equals 8 does satisfy the inequality, and so we should include it. Now there's another important feature here. Since the equation involves a square root, the radicand must be non-negative. In other words, the thing under the square root 4x minus 7 must be greater than or equal to 0. And so this is a second inequality that's embedded within this original. Well, it's another inequality, so we should solve it and find the critical points. And that gives us a critical value of 7 fourths. Again, if we hope to be a good math student or a good human being, we have to acknowledge that we started with an inequality. If x equals 7 fourths, if we try to substitute that back into our original inequality, we get a false statement. So we have to exclude this point, and we'll use an open circle. And so notice we now have three intervals to check. So in the first interval, we could check x equals 0. Now, this gives us square root of negative 7, and since this isn't even defined, x equals 0 is not a solution, so we should exclude this first interval. In the next interval, we could check a point in the middle, say, I don't know, x equals 2. And we find that this is false, so we need to exclude this interval. In this last interval, we could go big, because this includes everything to the right of 8. So we'll check x equals, oh, 1 million. And we find this is true, so we should include this last interval. And so our graph of the solution looks like this. And from the graph of the solution, we can write down our answer in interval notation. x is going to be the interval from 8 included all the way after. As another example, square root of x squared minus x minus 20 greater than or equal to x minus 2. So we'll start by solving the equality. Since this is the form root equals, we'll square both sides to get rid of the root. We'll expand the right hand side and collect like terms. And solve the equation. This gives us a critical value of 8, which we test. And since the inequality is true, then we include x equals 8. Because this is a square root, we need to make sure that the radicand is non-negative. So we need x squared minus x minus 20 to be greater than or equal to 0. So we'll ignore the inequality and solve 
giving us solutions x equals 5 or x equals negative 4. Now ordinarily we check these critical values against the inequality we were solving, but remember the inequality we're actually solving is this one. So we'll check our critical values to see whether they solve this original inequality. And we find that we should include negative 4 and exclude 5. The three critical values give us four intervals to test, so we'll test a point in each one. Over on the left, we can go big if x equals negative 1 million, which is true since square root is a positive number and what's on the right is a negative number. So we include this interval. The next interval includes 0, so we can test it out. If x equals 0, we have the square root of a negative number, and so our radical is undefined, so we exclude this interval. So in the next interval, we can try a test point of x equals 6, and this is false, so we'll have to exclude this interval. And in our last interval, we can try x equals 1 million, which is true, so we should include this interval in our solution set. Now, since we have the graph of our solution set, we can write our answer in interval notation. 